Jesus said, Man cannot live on bread alone, but from every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You're listening to Daily Truth. The question that I would ask is this, that when Christ finally returns, at his physical final return, in the new heavens and the new earth, does anyone die? There are those, the reprobate in hell, who shall experience the final death, the eternal death, cast into the lake of fire, who die forever. But will anyone physically die once Christ has physically returned? Once the new heavens and the new earth are fully established in the age to come, do people still die? And the answer from Scripture is an emphatic no, a resounding no. So Isaiah chapter 65 cannot be speaking of what life will be like after Christ returns. It says no longer will a child die in infancy. That would include abortion, infancy in the womb. And yet it also says that the youth shall die at a hundred, which means what? You're living in a time in real human history before the final physical return of Christ where people still die, albeit later. And that's meant to be one example and testimony of the progression of Christ's kingdom that now instead of people saying he died at 50, he was so young that people should say he died at 100. He was just a youth. The youth shall die at a hundred. And you might say, that'll never happen. Things have only gotten worse for 2,000 years. Brothers and sisters, let's just, at this point, it's not even theological. It's simply just logical. It was not that long ago that if someone lived to be 50 years old, we said, he's ancient. I can't believe he made it to 50. If someone died at 40, we said, what a full life. And I'm not talking about 1,000 years ago. This was normative in every culture, in every place, in every time until very, very recently. Very recently. And so we can already say that there is a sense in which death is being pushed back. Even now, it is the last of Christ's enemies to be truly and fully defeated. But even now, through the advance of the gospel, there are real, tangible, earthly implications. And you might say, well, what do lifespans, human lifespans have to do with the gospel? Everything. It is because of the Christian worldview and the gospel of Jesus Christ that medicine has advanced. Are there corruptions? Yes. Satan always seeks to take that which is good and twist it and pervert it. Is all medicine moral? No. I would never make such a naive and foolish claim. But don't forget when that ambulance drives by and you see a serpent wrapped around a staff on the side, that is a reference to Christian faith. That's not Islam. That's not secularism. That's not atheism. That's Christ. That Moses was to fashion a bronze serpent when the people of Israel, because of their rebellion, were getting bit by poisonous vipers and dying and growing ill in the wilderness. Moses was instructed and commanded by God to fashion a bronze serpent and to secure it on a staff and to raise it up, hoist it up, so that anyone in Israel who had been bitten by the poisonous vipers in their midst, if they were to look, they didn't have to crawl to it. They didn't have to touch it. They didn't have to kiss it. They only had to see it, to look. And if they saw this bronze serpent held up by Moses in the wilderness, they would be made whole. And so too, this became a symbol of health and medicine in the West. Christian roots, Christian roots. And this was ultimately not just to further medicine in a practical, physical sense, but it was ultimately meant to be a symbol, a type and shadow of Jesus Christ himself, that one eventually would be held up on a wooden staff, a tree, and that all who would look to him, not work for him, not crawl to him, not run to him, not touch him, But if they only would look with the eyes of faith and see him, 
that they would be healed of all their infirmities, not mere infirmities of this life in the physical sense, but that they would be healed of that wretched, eternal infirmity of sin. And that they would be spared the wrath of God if they would see him. Jesus says this even of himself, that I will be lifted up and draw many to myself. And so the implications of the gospel have gone forth in the spiritual, eternal, salvific sense. Yes and amen. But always with the advancement of that which is spiritual, if it is in fact true, there are tangible implications in that which is physical. 